What's the word, y'all? Another one take reaction to the play in day. Play in day number two is not officially wrapped up. The Bulls are up by 23 with two minutes ago. I'm hoping. <laughs> That something legendary doesn't happen. And we are going to go into Miami to fight them for their final eight seed. Um, but wow, 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 wow. Okay. Both of these games end up being interesting in their own right. And we're going to talk about both. We got to start off with Kobe White saving my life. This man, Kobe White, just put on a career performance. 40 plus points. And it might end up being more. He's got 40. And they keep making the jokes on the broadcast that these stats don't matter. So you'll never be able to know that Kobe White dropped 40 because his playing stats don't exist anywhere. But this is so beautiful to see as a Bulls fan for him to have his best game of his career on national TV. I've been talking about Kobe White for the last couple years and, and throughout his ups and downs, he's one of those players that I refuse to give up on. Part of that is because, of course, he's on my favorite team, right? It's hard to give up on any prospect on your favorite team. Anytime they do anything, they're like, see, he can do that full time. It's going to be good. Um, but it was something just about him. And I think the main thing was that no matter what the scenario was, whether he was riding the bench or he was starting or coming off the bench, somebody else hit a big shot, somebody else got a big block. He was always there for his teammates. When Zach Levine hit that shot against the Charlotte Hornets, there was nobody more excited for him than Kobe White. Every single game winner that DeMar DeRozan hit the last couple seasons, the person that was the most excited was Kobe White. This guy loves his teammates. He loves Chicago. And boy, does he love basketball. And he put a lot of time in this offseason. And he's one of the front runners for most approved players. Probably going to go to Tyrese Maxey. But who, 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 re who really knows at the end of the day, right? Who really knows? The ballots are already in, unfortunately. So this game doesn't do him much help. Um, but the Bulls live to see another day. And I went into this as a Bulls fan. I, of course, I always want to see my team win. But if we would have lost, I would have been cool. I had already got the, the Donovan Klingon, uh Photoshop's done. We're going to jump up in the lottery, baby. But maybe we're... We're a playoff team. This was one of the best games that the Bulls have played. Now, granted, this is against the Atlanta Hawks, who have a terrible, terrible defense. We talked about this a couple videos ago, that if Quinn Snyder, widely renowned as one of the best defensive minds in basketball over the last 10 years, can't fix the Atlanta Hawks defense, and nobody really can. And it had to be a point of emphasis from the Chicago Bulls to get to the lane, because Kobe White right now is 15-21 to 21 with only seven three-point attempts. He had a one-on-four fast break, and he did not do anything but get to the basket at will over and over and over again it had to be a point of emphasis for the guys and they they nailed that DeMar DeRozan set the tone very early on in that first quarter hitting a bunch of shots I'm a little bit afraid about Alex Caruso because him and Drummond collided and I guess we've had three superstar caliber players get injured because of play in Zion Jimmy Butler who we talk about and now Alex Caruso so who knows what that next game is going to look like in the play in but boy was this a great game for the Bulls they did not turn the ball over just six of those things and I, oh, I also want to give love to um Dalen Terry, who was all over the place defensively this game. Good to see another young player looking pretty solid. Ayo Sumu, I talked about him in our preview of this game. That Ayo Sumu guarding Trey Young is a nightmare for Trey Young. And Trey Young has 19 points, 10 assists, but 6 turnovers on 30% for the field. So, it is what it is. The Atlanta Hawks have to make that ultimate decision. If they don't make it, it's... So, they are in a rough spot with it because the idea of... We, we talked about this before. Trading one of the two players doesn't make sense if you're getting back draft capital because you don't own your own 2025 first round pick. So if we are trading Trey Young or we are trading DeJounte Murray, those trades, in my opinion, should be geared towards ha having players to, to kind of level out the talent, right? Trade a really good player for a good player or uh, two good players instead of going for let's get some draft capital because that you just punting your 2025 season when Cooper Flagg is in the draft. And according to everything I've read, he's the next guy. So Atlanta has a lot of things to do. They have to somehow build a, a defensive-minded team. Now, granted, they are also missing Jalen Johnson and Yaka Kongu, some guys, City Bay, who would be real contributors in a game like this, but their season is over. I've already made the the um the argument that this game shouldn't have even existed with both of these teams being seven and ten games under 500. Why the hell should they have an opportunity to, to take the heat spot? But the Bulls do. And most of that is because Jimmy Butler got injured in their game versus the Philadelphia 76ers. See that segue? Dope. Um, in this game, it was so interesting to see. I knew it was going to be a rock fight, right? Um, the Miami Heat have one of the better defenses, and I knew that Eric Spoelstra was going to make it very difficult for Joel Embiid. And their offense is just plain bad. There were some times in this one, second quarter, I want to say, that the Miami Heat made it look like they were going to win this game. That zone was destroying Philadelphia. Turnover after turnover. Let me see. How much DeLon Wright ended with a total of two steals? I promise you, I feel like he had 12 of them things. Jimmy Butler had three sneaky steals where he just crept up behind somebody. Joel Embiid took the ball and laid it up. But the real thing is that Jimmy Butler hurt himself. 
and they said they're gonna take some some imaging and stuff like that they think it's an mcl which would be awful because that would just mean that he won't be able to play in that next playing game and even if they win that next playing game that means he's going to be hobbled or he might not play in that first round series versus the boston celtics um, but the 76ers in this one joel and b did not have a good game but he had a good last three minutes and sometimes, in my, in my personal opinion, I, I promise you, I don't, I don't grade and be differently than the end of person because anytime I try to talk about and be and talk about the pros and the cons, people say I'm too heavy on the pros. I, Joel B had a bad game. There was plenty of times in this one, and when they were running that zone, well, of course, the idea was to front Joel and B, make it difficult for him to get the ball. Kevin Love was phenomenal on that block today, preventing Joel from touching the ball. But there were plenty of times in this one, I'm like, why, why do we have Joel and B setting up? Um, on the block or setting up at the middle of the zone. How about we let him initiate the offense? It ain't like he can't dribble. It ain't like he can't pass. We want the ball in our best player's hands, and if they're denying him to touch it, why don't we start off that way? Sometimes he was just sitting. Oh, he was just sitting. Oh, he was just sitting. And the shots he was taking, a lot of them felt like him trying to draw the contact. He ended up with 10 free throws in this one, him trying to draw the contact. But in that last three-minute stretch, in that last three minute stretch, sometimes that's all you really need. Nicholas Batum turned into Superman, and then he needed his guy and Joel Embiid to take them home. And in the fourth quarter, he had that big three point shot to tie the game with 11 minutes to go. That was a huge, huge shot. Nicholas Batum hit a big three to put them up three. Um, B Ball Paul came in and got him an alley oop dunk. Then we got Tyrese Maxey. And then eventually, when Joel Embiid got back into the game, um, he had some free throws. He had another three with two minutes to go. He had the, the, the jump shot that definitely was one of those shots. It looked like he was looking for contact, but it went in. And then he also had that pass to Kelly Oubre under the basket. So, again, he did not have a good game, but the last three minutes was all they really needed for him. He wasn't moving too great, and I'm, I'm interested about that. I saw that the, uh, the 76ers are the favorite on some betting apps with them versus the Knicks. I don't know how I feel about that just yet. We're going to make videos about predicting the stuff once it's finally done. But we should probably talk about the Miami Heat because they're one game away from potentially having their season in. And again, it's against the Bulls, and they've played the Bulls relatively well this season. One of those games, Jimmy Butler hit a game winner. One of the games, the Bulls blew them out. So anything can really happen, especially if we don't know what Jimmy Butler's going to do. But man, their offense, I've said it before, is a tough, tough watch. There's a lot of conversation about Tyler Hero on Twitter right now, and it makes sense. He was 9 of 27 from the field. He's 4 for 14, and that last shot that he attempted, I had to look at the shot clock, look at the game clock, to see if I was missing something because it was an ill-advised early shot. It was an ill-advised early shot for sure. But if we, were, if we were watching the same game, Tyler Hero, especially after Jimmy Butler was hobbled, I know he had came back um, and, and looked somewhat decently moving and stuff, but it's him, it's Caleb Martin, it's Nikola Jovic, who I thought should have played more because he looked pretty damn good in the minutes that he did play. They had zero other shot creators. So we're off on offense. And there's nobody else on the team that could create them for themselves or for others outside of a hobble Jimmy Butler. I am the dude that won six men of the year averaging 20. I am a dude that is a microwave. So yes, I'm going to get my shots up because would I rather trust myself taking a shot or trust Caleb Martin to create? There, there's a problem with the injuries for them. And I'm not here to blame injuries, but they were missing um, 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 Terry Rozier, who's a creator. Duncan Robinson was upgraded to probable and then available. I, did he just get a DMP coach's decision? I don't know. Because he's a guy that could definitely help. So that's, that makes me think that he just wasn't ready or he did not suit up at all because he definitely would have played minutes in this one because they needed some shooting. They ended up hitting 14 threes eventually, but it was, it was a rough time to get there. So... Um, who knows, this next game between the Bulls and the Miami Heat is very contingent on who's going to, if if Jimmy Butler's playing, I'm probably going to take the Miami Heat to make it difficult. If Jimmy Butler's not playing, I'm probably going to take the Bulls. But it, it will be just like Bulls fashion to lose to the team without their star player. I've watched the team 83 games now this season. And I know how crazy it can be. Um, but let me know what you think. Kobe White is the greatest to ever do it. The game is finally wrapped up. He's being interviewed. I need to see what he's saying. I, I'm just, I, listen, Kobe, let's go back to Kobe White. This is my channel. This is my Bulls. I'm going to talk about Kobe White again. Um, Kobe White is the guy. And I cannot wait to see whether we win the next game or lose and the season is over for him. I cannot wait to see what he would look like next season. He's one of the best contracts in basketball right now. He signed for nothing. And the way he just played tonight, you can't convince me that an all-star appearance might not be on the horizon next year or the year after that, depending on what the Bulls are doing. I would assume one of the best contracts basketball, what did he sign for? 330? Three years, 30 million? Still. 
Come on, man. Come on, man. Hey, Bulls. See Ray, baby.